James Franklin started life in North Bay, virtually a child of the Canadian Shield. Born on the same terrain that would one day contribute to his success as a geoscientist. Jim Franklin is an icon in the Canadian mining community. He was a pioneer of pre-Cambrian metallogeny in Canada, having spent much of his career documenting the complex evolution of the Canadian Shield and the link to its phenomenal mineral wealth. The exploration principles and techniques developed early in his career had a major impact on the subsequent discovery of significant mines, both in Canada and elsewhere. Jim's original career goals involved electrical engineering. It was the age of Sputnik, and I thought this was a pretty cool thing to do. And I met a guy in residence who was a geologist and who spent his summer out on canoes and things and sounded much more fun than sitting in an office wearing a tie, so I moved into geology and never regretted it. After completing first-year geology at Laurentian University, Jim went on to obtain his bachelor's and master's degrees at Carleton University and a PhD from Western University. His thesis work took him to Thunder Bay to study regional metallogeny. Ultimately, out of all of that, you learn uh, uh, useful things that explain the presence of ore deposits, and from that you derive new criteria that help you to find more deposits, not just there, but worldwide. The Geological Survey of Canada supported Jim's master's and PhD thesis. Jim was then offered a job as Lakehead University's first professor of economic geology, where he stayed for five years. He brings a lot of academic knowledge to the business and disseminates it to anybody who will listen. Uh, Jim can talk geology anywhere, anytime to anyone. Um, but uh, what I think, uh, you know, his biggest uh, contribution is, is, is really this, this, this idea that he's been helped with the training of innumerable geologists who have gone out and done other things. While in Thunder Bay, Jim consulted for Naranda and was instrumental in helping find a deposit in the Sturgeon Lake area. Following his tenure at Lakehead University, Jim was hired by the Geological Survey of Canada in Ottawa. Quite frankly, they created uh, the job of my dreams for me. Created a position called Regional Metallogenist for the Southern Canadian Shield, which was kind of the 007 of geology. I could do pretty much what I wanted. He's a force of nature when it comes to geology. Uh, his legacy is being able to transfer this, this in-depth knowledge of geoscience, in particular his knowledge of geochemistry, into and develop the, that knowledge into exploration criteria that is used worldwide by the industry. Jim's career at the Geological Survey took him places few geologists go. He was asked to do research at the bottom of the ocean, looking for black smokers. They'd only been discovered the year before. I'd heard about them, read about them and said, you know, yeah, sure, I'd love to do that, Mike, you know, but I don't have a clue, and hello, it's Jim from North Bay, Ontario. <laughs> you know, never been anything larger than a Zodiac on Lake Superior, but sure, you know, I'd give it a go if anybody wanted me to go to sea. That work led to an invitation to collaborate with the U.S. Geological Survey and other international organizations like the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So few people have ever done that. Very few people have ever had the opportunity to dive up to 4,000 meters in the ocean floor and look at things, which I've done, and to work on these high temperature vents uh, with, um, for, for fundamentally eight or nine years. Uh, and uh, it was wonderful. His work led to a discovery about 200 kilometers off the west coast of Canada in an area called Middle Valley. And we realized that we had found something highly significant. And so, uh, as it turns out, it was probably the largest uh, mineral deposit ever discovered on the seafloor. Jim was key to establishing the Federal Provincial Territorial Intergovernmental Geoscience Accord. And uh, Jim was key in, in that example of bringing uh, two disparate groups together and actually developing an accord, which is the first accord signed by all the provinces of Canada, including Quebec. Uh, and so that, that was quite an accomplishment. Since retiring in 1998 from his role as Chief Geoscientist for the GSC, Jim has continued his passion for learning and teaching. 
The thing about Jim is I think he thinks that he should be giving back to the business for all of the benefits that he's had. As a result, the, the industry in general is, is benefiting from that. Jim has worked tirelessly for industry organizations and has been an adjunct professor with several universities. He also created a series of talks on Parliament Hill called Bacon and Eggheads, designed to help politicians and bureaucrats understand recent scientific findings. Following retirement, Jim created his own consulting company, Franklin Geosciences. The last 20 years of consulting work have been a continuous surprise to me <laughs> because first off I thought, who'd ever want to hire old Jim to do something? More than 70 companies have sought Jim's expert guidance. He is currently on the board of several, including UR Energy, a uranium company with a project in Wyoming. Well, he, he really is an advocate for the prospector and the, and the junior mining company. I'd say he's, uh, he's had a, a large impact on the exploration uh, company, particularly the juniors.